Today we are going to be spawning in a variety of enemies using spawners that are going to be linked to our game mode. For this approach, we're going to first need to build the enemy spawner, and then we're going to go to our game mode. So let's start with that spawner now. As with everything else we're done, we're going to make a C++ backbone. So we're going to make a new C++ class that is going to extend off of actor because we want to put it in the world. And this I am going to call enemy spawner. Once all that loading is done, you'll have a new toy. Let's go over to our header file. There's not much that we need to do here, but we are going to go to the bottom of our file and we're going to create the private section because we need a private U property. Now this U property is going to be same as all of our other ones. We're only going to want to edit the default values and we're going to put this in a category that we are going to call spawning just to keep things simple for us. And then since we're going to be creating a reference to the enemy that we want to spawn, we're going to be using something called T sub class of. Make sure you get the capitalization proper there. And then here's where we're going to declare what we want to make. Now, since we're not using the header file, we're going to forward declare a enemy or whatever enemy that you're going to be spawning. And then we're going to give our variable a name that I'm going to call enemy. And then in our public section, we're going to go and create a method that we're going to be using to actually spawn the enemies. And the reason we're making this public is we're going to want our game mode to be able to call this. So we're going to just make this a void function because it's not going to return anything. And this is going to be our spawn enemy function. So now we're going to go and create this inside of the C++ file. And I'm going to do that by using my alt enter and inside of our C++ file, we're now going to have our spawn enemy and some other stuff that we're going to fill in. First, let's scroll all the way to the top of our C++ file and we're going to need to include something. Now we forward declared this before, but we need to include enemy dot H. This way we can use the enemy that we've already built. So now let's scroll back down and now we're going to go to our spawn enemy here. Spawn enemy is going to simply spawn in the enemy that we have designated in our variable. The best way I've found to do this is we're going to create a pointer variable of the type that we're creating and we're going to just call this the enemy. Now here is where we're actually going to spawn in the enemy that we're making. So first we're going to get a reference to our world by calling get world. Then we're going to call a method off of that called spawn actor. Our enemy is an actor, so this is what we need to do. Now off of spawn actor, we need to declare the type that we're spawning, and that is of course going to be a enemy. Now inside of spawn actor, we need to give a few different parameters. We need to give a reference to what we're spawning, we need to give the starting location, and we need to give the starting rotation. Now we already created this variable inside of our header file that's going to be populated through that U property, that is the enemy. As for where we want it to start location wise, well, we have a reference for that and that's going to be wherever our spawner is placed in the world. And this is our spawner. So we're going to look at our root component for this spawner that we're on. And we're going to call a method off of that called get component location. This is going to look at the root component or the base of our spawner and give that information to our enemy that we're spawning. And very similar, we're also going to do the same thing for the rotation, we're going to get our root component and we're going to call get component rotation. So now whenever our spawn enemy function is called, we're going to create an enemy at our spawners location and rotation, and then it's going to go forth and do its thing. So now we're ready to put these spawners into the world. So let's save everything we've done so far and compile these changes. I did get a build error just so that you guys have a reference and if you're following this super closely, the reason for this error is I did not put edit defaults only, I put edit default and that is not the right command. So let's just resave and then recompile. And we can see with that we actually get it to work. So now we're going to create the blueprint based off of our enemy spawner. So I'm going to right click create blueprint based off of this. I'm going to put it in our content folder due to our knack of or I'm going to put this in our content folder due to my lack of organizational skills and then we're going to have our blueprint here. So now the big thing that we need to do here is we need to give the default parameter of our enemy. That's gonna be found over here. We can see that spawning section that we made and we have a reference to our enemy. Now we need to make sure that we pass in the blueprint because that is what actually has the visual data instead of the C++ backbone, which is represented by this normal enemy. So pass in your blueprint enemy and then compile and save. So now we're ready to place our enemy spawners into the world to designate the spawning locations. I'm going to be running with three different spawners, but you guys are welcome to use as many as you want. My approach to this is going to work no matter how many you have. So let's start by dragging out our first spawner. 
First, I'm going to reset this to origin because that's how my entire game has been based so far. And then I'm going to scroll this all the way to the right hand side. We want it to be slightly off camera so that we don't see the enemies just spawning halfway through our screen or something like that. Now inside the outliner, if I go and highlight my enemy spawner and hit F2, it's gonna let me rename this and I'm gonna call this my low spawner because this is going to be the lowest spawner in the world. Now, how low is too low? Honestly, I want this to be in line with the ground because I want this to look like a rock. So I'm just gonna leave this at zero and then the cube will handle the rest. So if I drag my cube over here and just put it over the spawner, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like when it comes into the world. It's going to be running this way and it's going to be jutting out of the ground, which is a good look and that's what I want. Now let's drag in our second spawner and do the same process. Let's reset it to the origin, drag it all the way to over here, and then we want this to be our medium spawner. So let's start by renaming this. And then let's raise this up an appropriate amount. Now this is the spawner that I want to spawn enemies that are going to make my player crouch but I don't want them to be able to jump over it. So for that, let's say, what if I put it like here? That might be a little too shallow, it's hard to say. Let's put it to like 120, 130, and then let's see what that looks like when I drag my cube over it. We might need to tweak this a little bit more later once we get this actually up and running, but for right now, let's leave our spawner location at Z axis 130 and see how that looks later. Now, rather than dragging and dropping, I'm going to duplicate my medium spawner by hitting Control D, and then I'm going to rename by pressing F2 again, and I'm going to call this my high spawner. And this one is what I want to basically be a fake out. I want the player to think they need to do something, but realistically, it's just gonna sail over their head. And I'm gonna put this at like, I don't know, I feel like double of the medium is probably appropriate, so somewhere around like 250, because when we put our enemy there, like this feels like a good height. So now that our spawners exist in the world, we're gonna go into our game mode and we're going to grab these objects for use inside the game mode to actually spawn the enemies. So let's go back into our C++ classes and open up the Dino Run tutorial game mode or whatever game mode you've created inside of C++ that we're going to use now. So let's start by going into the header file to set up our contract. As with before, we're going to create a private section, and inside of that, we're going to create what's called a U function. This is a function that we're gonna to want to have access to inside a blueprint. So let's call U function, and we're gonna make this blueprint callable, meaning that we want to call this in blueprint, and we're gonna make this a void function called spawn enemy. Now this is an entirely different function to the spawn enemy we made in our other enemy spawner class, but that's the point of this. This is this file's version of this method. So let's create this inside the C++ file, nice and easy with the alt enter method. And now let's start talking about our game mode C++ file. First, up to the top of the file, we're gonna to have to add some files that we're including. The first one is going to be for our spawners. So we need to add enemy spawner.h. And now for this approach that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna create a local variable that's going to be private by the nature of us creating it inside of the C++ file. And this is going to be a T array or an array. Now I will make a companion video on what arrays are and what this is doing specifically, but for right now, for the purposes of time, just follow along and think of arrays like a good way to store multiple objects of the same type. So to make an array in Unreal, we're going to call T array and then we're going to declare what kind of array we want it to make. And in this case, we want this to be an array of actors because that is what our enemy spawners are. And then we're just gonna give this a variable name that I'm going to call my enemy spawners. So now we're gonna go ahead and create the begin play method for use in our game mode. We're gonna to have to do this in both the header file and the C++ file, but let's start with our header file. If we take a reference point from the enemy spawner header file that we were working in before, we can see that they call this right here, virtual void begin play override. And we're just gonna copy this blatantly because we just want to use this exact same functionality. Let's go into our header file. Between public and private, we're gonna make protected. And then I have to remember what I do copy and paste, so I'm just gonna delete the second protected and then we're good and we have our begin play. Now, now we're gonna go ahead and create begin play inside of the C++. And now we have access to the method that's going to be called when play starts. Now, if we look inside the enemy spawner C++ as a reference point, we can see that they call super begin play at the start. The reason for this is if anything inherits off of us, or if we're inheriting off of anything with functionality, we need to make sure that we call this so that everyone's functionality is present. So let's just copy and paste super begin play into our begin play as well. So now for the actual functionality we're gonna be creating, we're gonna be using a file called gameplay statics to gather 
everything of a certain type and then use it. Now we're going to be using this specifically to get a reference to all of our spawners that we've placed in the world. Now to set up for this, we're first going to need to include the file. So we go back to the top and we're going to include, and this is called kismet slash gameplay statics dot h. So now inside of begin play, let's focus on this now, we are going to call a method off of you gameplay statics. The method we're calling is get all actors of class. Now this method is special, it needs a few things. First, what world are we referencing? So we're just going to get our world because that is the world we would like to reference. Then we're going to say, what do we, what do we want? We want a reference to our enemy spawners and we want it to be referencing their class specifically. And then finally, where do we want to put it? Well, this is why we need to create that array before. We're going to put this inside of our array, my enemy spawners. So now when begin play happens, we are going to look at our world and we're going to get a reference to all of our spawners and put them in an array that we can use. So now with all of that pre-work done, we're able to go into our spawn enemy method and use this array to spawn an enemy. Now my approach to this is going to be using a random number. To generate a random number, we're going to need to include another file inside of this so that we can use. So let's scroll back to the top and we're going to go and we're going to include another file. Let's include something called math slash unreal math utility dot h. This is going to give us access to a bunch of different math functions, but most importantly, it's going to let us generate something random. So now back to spawn enemy here, let's start flushing this out. First, I'm just going to create a UE log so that we know that this method gets called properly. So let's create a UE log and we're going to make this a log temp like we always do. It's going to be a warning like it always is. And then we're going to create a text thing called spawning enemy. So now for the meat and potatoes, we're going to talk through this. Our goal is to use the spawn enemy function we created on our enemy spawner. Our array is currently thinking everything is of type actor. So we're going to need a way to translate from actor to enemy spawner in order to use that method. The way we do this in Unreal is we're going to cast this. So keyword cast, and we're going to cast whatever's about to follow into what we're requesting here. And we want to cast whatever's about to follow to a enemy spawner, because that's the name of our spawner. So inside of these parentheses, whatever goes here is going to be cast into an enemy spawner as long as it is of type enemy spawner. Now we know, based off of the way that we set it up, that anything that's going to be within the my enemy spawners array is going to be of type enemy spawners. So now to access a certain part of the array, we're going to need to put square braces. So we're basically saying, what part of the list do I want to access here? And again, we want this to be random. So we're going to use one of our fmath functions. So we're going to call fmath and the method we're gonna use is called frandrange. Now inside of this, we're gonna give the range that we want. And the range that we want is from zero because that is the first number, or basically that signifies what is whatever is at the front of the line. And we want this to go all the way to the end of our maximum spots that we've given to our array. So to get the maximum amount of values that exist in our array, we're gonna call my enemy spawners dot to give a function reference num and that is going to give you a reference to the maximum values that exist inside of our array to recap whatever is inside this parentheses we're going to treat it as an enemy spawner what we're giving this specifically is one of the enemy spawners that exists in our array specifically something random from zero to our maximum number of spawners now whichever spawner we choose we're gonna want this to call the spawn method. Now, since we've cast all of this as an enemy spawner, we're able to go and call the method spawn enemy. We are now done working in our game mode, so let's save all of this and compile. Once that's done, we're gonna to go to the blueprint. So let's go to content and find that blueprint, my dino run game mode. Once this comes up, we're now gonna set the functionality around a timer because we want our enemies to spawn every X seconds. Since that's a variable amount of time that we might want to control directly, we're going to create a variable inside of our blueprint. We can do that by hitting the little plus sign here, and we're going to call this our spawn time. We're going to change our type over here to be a float, and then we're going to compile this so that we can set our values. 
Now let's say that I wanna spawn something every one second for the sake of testing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our event tick. So this is going to happen very often. But we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this and we're gonna call something called delay. So this is saying that we're gonna check this every tick, but we only wanna execute and go past this point every whatever seconds. However many seconds do we want? Well, we want that to be our spawn time. So let's drag a reference to our spawn time and make that the duration that's going to hold ourselves accountable here. Once that delay is completed, we're gonna pull off and we're gonna call the U function that we created called spawn enemy. So now, every one second, we're going to go into our code and we're gonna call that spawn enemy function. And that spawn enemy function is going to call our spawners spawn enemy function to actually spawn the enemy in the game. Let's compile and save this and see what this looks like. I'm gonna hit play and then I'm going to jump out. And now I'm going to zoom out and go over here. And we can see that every one second, a new cube is spawning randomly, and then it's gonna go and assail our player. This is perfect. We now have a spawning functionality that we're gonna be able to use. And next time we're gonna be creating the collision system that's going to be used in this game so that we can actually do things once an enemy makes contact with our player.